There are not enough words to describe the difference between reading about China and experiencing China. Two thousand and eight, the year of the Beijing Olympics, when China invited the world to a dazzling display of its talents and ambitions. But in the world of education, it's the third year of a unique partnership between U.S. educational leaders and the Chinese government, the Chinese Bridge for American Schools. Sponsored by the College Board and the Chinese language agency Hanban, the Chinese Bridge brings hundreds of principals, teachers, and superintendents to China for 10 days each June. They visit schools, universities, and institutes, and meet with national and regional leaders, all with an eye towards forging closer ties with Chinese schools and promoting the teaching and learning of Chinese in the United States. College Bar is a Hanban best friend and the best uh, partner. And with the College Bar, the cooperation, I think it's not only for our uh, language, not only for education, really it's for next generation, the two countries. Until you've been here, and until you've seen what they're doing, you have no concept of the scale, the speed, the drive that this, that this country is manifesting. Arriving in China, the American educators start together in Beijing and then fan out, with different groups visiting schools in Shanghai, Yunnan, Hainan, and elsewhere. I know you are still suffering from the jet lag, right? Please change your watch and yourself into Beijing time. The sooner the better. The College Board does a lot of the logistics and the work in the United States as far as recruiting participants for the program. But Hanban is actually the organization that funds the program, supports the program. Our typical schedule was a welcome ceremony at the Great Hall of the People. Then we would have a banquet. We've always had a lecture at Peking University. A quick overview of the development of the Chinese people and culture. Dear friends, there are some great myths. One is the myth that China is the big market you just have to walk into and then you sell your stuff and you get rich overnight. Well, it isn't that easy. China is a big market for people who know Chinese. <laughs> Our wonderful fast food chain like McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken are now present in China and have a few thousand outlets. Uh, we shouldn't ignore the fact that there are 40,000 Chinese restaurants in the United States alone. <laughs> this year, 25 members of the National Superintendent's Roundtable were part of the program. We followed them throughout Beijing and on to Harbin, a city of six million in the northeastern province of Heilongjiang, bordering Siberia. It took a couple of years to manage to double the size of one of our schools and do some renovations, but here they replaced the whole university, this enormous campus, in just, in just two years. I've been told now that China uses more steel than the United States, Europe, and Japan combined. The Chinese plan to have 285 million English-speaking Chinese by 2015. I was dismayed to hear talk of us having all of 11,000 K-12 children now learning Chinese at this point in America. This is very rapidly becoming a first world country and this government is exerting tremendous will and resources that um, they are very serious 
about reasserting themselves as a world power. They're not kidding when they say that they're making education their priority. They go to school longer. They go to school year-round. But more importantly, uh, the emphasis throughout the whole culture and the whole society is to support that education. Such an emphasis on the arts and the culture. It's going to be the imagination society that's going to make a difference. And that's what they are beginning to support so heavily at the youngest grade levels for their children that we can learn from. We often have an activity where we actually go and, and see a lot of the materials that are available for us to use to teach Chinese. What the good is a hang, hang go? Okay, no, that, okay, no, that. I walked out of here feeling like I had been at the Smithsonian and I have only just begun to duck. There was so much. And basic acquisition of the Chinese language is very, very impressive. Is that there's this projector screen, technology, computer type, uh, smart boards, and all that stuff, so that they have jumped kind of a whole generation of, of uh, instructional aids and they've gone to where we all need to be in America. I don't know the way to the Happy Valley, can you tell me? Oh, the Happy Valley, I know it. I have a map. We're clearly seeing exemplary schools, so I don't, you know, I don't believe that all. Chinese schools are like that, but the, the, the sense of purposefulness and, uh, and focus is something I think American schools can certainly learn from. Each young person I talk to, they have aspirations and they have dreams. And that's the one thing I think that we've lost a little bit of. It's not that our kids don't have, some, you know, they want to go to college or they want a good job, but sometimes there's not as much a dream about I want to be a leader or I want to make a contribution. As Americans, we're never going to really understand other cultures unless we travel abroad and even live abroad. And this experience has really brought home that message for me. The dream is one day, I hope, in U.S. there are many and many students, not only in university level, but also in the middle school and the primary school, many students can learn Chinese. I hope that the relationship between Hanban and the College Board uh, will extend beyond the teaching of languages uh, to a much deeper and a more continuous and persistent exchange of cultures and understanding between, well, let's face it, the, the two world powers today. The exchange between China and Hanban will involve exchanging ideas about how to make a better world for each of us and for all of us. Yeah.